Tony had been trying really hard lately. And this, this was his reward. She was 15 minutes late. Every Friday afternoon for the past year and a half, he'd pulled into this commuter parking lot and uh, at five minutes to six and parked in the back corner with an empty spot behind him. Meg's blue hatchback would pull in and uh, take the space behind him and Shane would get out and throw his backpack in the back seat of Tony's car. Shane would jump in and they would drive away. Meg parked behind Tony. Tony never looked in the rearview mirror. If they had anything to say, Shane would carry the message. They hadn't actually spoken for over a year now. Of course, it hadn't always been like that. They had been happy. They'd, they'd joked and laughed and talked a lot, talked about the things that people in love talk about, talked about the things that couples talk about and talked about the baby that was coming and then how beautiful he was and how smart. But then what happened? The laughing stopped and all that was left was Shane listening to his sarcastic father and his irritable mother building walls and getting angrier. And then after a while, the talking was done by lawyers. And then it was all over, except for the scars. Shane lived with Meg all week, and Tony had him on the weekends and one month in the summer. He shared his son's life two days a week. Three nights, eight meals, until time for school on Monday morning. Tony was a good dad. He didn't spoil Shane, but nothing got in the way of their time together. No overtime, no appointments, no trips, nothing. But now, now she was 20 minutes late and he was, he was getting angry because he really had been trying lately, trying to be a peacemaker. It had started a couple of months ago in Walt's kitchen. Tony was there to do a few odd jobs that Walt wasn't able to do anymore, but Walt could make a really good cup of coffee, so they would sit and talk about life. And this one day, Walt had started telling Tony a story about something that happened when he was in the army, and Tony's mind had wandered. And before he knew it, Walt was chuckling at something he hadn't heard, so Tony, you know, pretended to laugh. But Walt said, what's the matter? You're only half here. Tony shook his head and said, no, nothing, nothing. I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I don't know. I got a lot on my mind, you know? And Walt listened the way only someone who loves you can listen. And he said, I know, but I don't know. I've never been a dad, he said. I never needed a lawyer. I never lost the kinds of things that you've lost. But he thought for a moment and he said, but I've been a soldier. Tony nodded. And Walt said, the thing about wars is, you know, they end. But when they're over, there's still work to do. There are still things that can be fixed. And I know that you feel like you've lost your war. And peace doesn't just happen. But it can be made. Peace can be made. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. If you're at all inclined to take the advice of an old fool, think about that. Talk to God about it, okay? Tony said, 
Yeah, um, okay. Sure. I'll think about it. But he didn't really think about it. I mean, peacemakers, sons of God, who talks like that? Except for Walt. I mean, what does it even mean? It was something that he vaguely remembered from Sunday school decades ago. Some song by that, uh, that monk guy who you always see in pictures with a bird eating from his hand and bunnies around his feet. Not exactly every 12-year-old boy's role model of choice. So he didn't really think about it. Until one Monday night. He was up late, feeling sorry for himself and flipping through a photo album, mostly pictures of Shane, the newborn in dad's arms and the pudgy toddler laughing at something and the skinny, serious boy on his bike. Every picture that Tony looked at took him back to a first word and a wobbly step or a lost teddy bear or a math test with a smiley face on it. <laughs> he couldn't even believe that Shane was learning to drive. Man, he loved his son. What he wouldn't give to see him happy. And maybe it was the memories, maybe it was the time of night, but sitting there, smiling down on photos that were smiling back up at him, Tony did think about it, sons of God. What if, what if being a son of God was, was like this, like, like being a photo in an album on somebody's lap? smiling up at somebody who was smiling back. That would be something. So Tony, Tony started trying to make peace. He figured he could manage, he could manage just not saying anything negative about Meg when Shane was around. It wasn't easy, but he remembered what Walt said, and he would remember to, to talk to God about it, and it seemed like he always did. He always helped. So when Meg was a few minutes late at the drop-off, Tony didn't say anything about it. When Shane said that he was learning to cook because Mom had had to work late a bunch of nights this month... Tony just said, so when are you going to cook something for me? And when Shane said that Aunt Joyce, Meg's sister, had crashed her bike and had to have her jaw wired shut and couldn't talk, well, Tony had to talk to God about that one real quick, but he did not say what he was thinking. He felt good about that one. But this, this today, she was now half an hour late and he was really angry. And when he finally saw her pull in the parking lot, he could have just spit. She pulled around behind him and it looked like she and Shane were arguing about something. And then finally, when he threw himself out of the car, he stomped up to Tony's passenger door, opened it, leaned in, took a deep breath and said, Mom says there's a thing at her work Sunday afternoon for all the families, and she says it means a lot to her, and she really wants me to go, and I think it's okay, but it means you have to bring me back here Sunday morning instead of Monday. And he braced himself. Well, Tony was already angry, but come on. Sunday was his. The past half hour had been his, and now she wanted Sunday too. He had a legal right. He had paid through the nose for that lawyer to just scrape up weekends. Not to mention, no notice, 
No thought for what he might have had planned for the weekend and no consideration and no guts making Shane deliver the message for her. It was just, you tell her. And he saw the cringe in Shane's eyes. He saw the hunch of his shoulders and he remembered Peacemaker. On the inside, Tony screamed for help. And he heard somebody somewhere ask him, what's the cost of peace, Tony? What's the cost of war? He swallowed hard. He took the deepest breath he'd ever taken. Tell her she'll owe me a day. What time? Shane blinked. He straightened up and he breathed. He walked back to the little blue car and said something and in the mirror, Tony saw Meg deflate and say something back. He saw her look forward and catch Tony's eye in the mirror and the tiniest surprised nod. The passenger door slammed and Shane said, she says 1230 is, is okay. As they pulled out of the parking lot, Shane said, thanks, you know. Eyes on the road, Tony said. Yeah, I know. For the rest of his life, whenever Tony remembered that moment, it was a snapshot. One of many pressed into an album on the lap of someone who was smiling down at him. And he was smiling 